Uh, we have roots dating back to 1917. It's a, an American company, uh, primarily working on uh, steam adductors back in those days. Uh, in the 1950s, they entered the uh, uh, scrubbing market for industrial applications. And a few years ago, we entered the marine market. And we entered it as a company, CR Ocean Engineering. Uh, our designs uh, uh, include hybrid uh, um, open loop and closed loop. So you've heard from Marco some of the benefits of each. The date of 2020 is really the main date that is going to affect everybody, assuming it goes forward. And that's the big if. There is a study being conducted uh, now uh, to make a suggestion to IMO as to whether to proceed with it or not. Uh, the study is presently scheduled to complete in the end of uh, June, and IMO is going to see that at MEPC 70, hopefully. Whether they decide, it's only uh, a guess. Uh, they will see it, uh, but decisions at IMO don't always happen when they're supposed to. So uh, it, it was, that's the original 2018 date where the study was supposed to be done. It w there was a request by many, uh, uh, groups to do it earlier to allow more time to plan, uh, which makes sense because if the refinery have to uh, retrofit to be able to desulfurize fuel, it's going to take them four years. So doing it 2018 and expecting it that 2020 goes in effect was too late. So that's why 2016. So what you see there, and, and that's what's happening. There. So hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have some directions. Even if they don't decide, we'll know what the study is recommending. And based on that, we have a fairly good direction because not only the ship owners are waiting, but also the refineries are waiting. And, and uh, uh, because of uh, uh, the markets being so indecisive at this stage, uh, our companies, our uh, scrubber companies, are all pending, waiting for what's going to happen. Uh, A few years ago, that's what we were expecting. A few years ago, we were looking at the, this kind of uh, uh, fuel prices and forecasts. But now we know better, because that gentleman from BP from before, he gave us a very good opinion as to what the fuel price is doing, which is nobody knows. <laughs> so this is what we expected. Many of us jumped into this market thinking that's what was going to happen. But instead, that's what happened to the oil pricing in 2015 which nobody expected, nobody anticipated, but it happened. And why did it happen? It, it happened because OPEC lost control. Before that, OPEC was controlling where the pricing was going. They were controlling the, the output, and that adjusted the pricing. Uh, but with so many now other uh, avenues of fuel, like the United States, uh, like now Iran trying to come in, and some of the other Canada, the, uh, the sand, uh, sand bars in Canada. There's almost as much fuel, if not more fuel, coming out of those countries than within OPEC. So OPEC can no more sole control on it. And I think there's some political uh, tug of war going on as to who's going to control what, and therefore the whole pricing just collapsed. There was also some hope, some hope by some of the industries that maybe uh, Iran was going to come in and do all these additional fuel, lowering the prices even further. Uh, Iran at this stage is saying no. Who knows what's going to happen? Nobody knows for sure. But even with the lower price, what I'm showing here is the, there is still a differential between uh, high sulfur and low sulfur. It's not as great as it was a couple of years ago. It's almost half. Uh, so we're a couple of years ago, you could pay off a scrubber project in a year and a half. It'll take us three years now. So the driver for our business is, in fact, the differential between low sulfur and high sulfur. So this is Fujara in Houston and Rotterdam. So the differential has not totally gone away. Uh, and so there is still a driver. But what comes into effect now, more importantly, is how much time you spend in Anika. If you spend in Anika uh, time of, say, 40%, it may still make sense. 
if you're only spending 20% in an ECA, it makes no sense at all to retrofit at this stage. So you might as well wait to know if 2020 is going to go in effect. So it, it all comes down to economics. Does it make sense for the ship owner or the operator to do this to save money or not? So technologies are great, LNG is great, but if it doesn't make money, it's not going to happen. Now, what's going to affect, I think, going forward is what is the demand? Because right now, the refineries are putting out as much of the uh, MGO as they can. They can probably push it a little more, uh, but they're looking at what is the demand, and this is the demand of the next four years. It's predicted to go up considerably. And at that point, they're going to have to start investing money to develop low sulfur fuel. And the, the issue is going to be how much money are they willing to invest? Each refinery will need about a billion dollars to develop the low sulfur fuel capabilities to support 2020 if everybody decided to go low sulfur fuel. And that means it's probably going to be 100 billion that has to be spent uh, in the next uh, few years. And based on what OPEC is saying, you may need about $600 differential to pay that investment. So if we all decide to go low sulfur fuel, and if the refineries decide to make the investment, the differential is no longer going to be 150 to 200. It's going to be five, six, or seven hundred dollars. And I, and I think that's where we're heading at this point, because even, even with the report saying the refineries can do this and the uh, uh, scrubber supplier, there's sufficient amount of them out there. There's about 24 companies that sell scrubbers nowadays. So DuPont and, and my company uh, are only two. And Wurzela does it, and Alfa Laval, and many others. So even though we have many companies, there's not enough for companies to do the total uh, supply of all the ships if, in fact, everybody decided to go scrubber. So what we're expecting is a mix. Some companies will go LNG, some companies will go scrubbers. Uh, we know Stena is putting some additional methanol ships together. So there's going to be a mix of uh, technologies, and I think that mix will all be possible by 2020 if the decision is made this year. So I'll just pass through. We do scrubbers. Uh, this is some of the ships we're doing now. Uh, we're doing cruise ships, Roro, Ropax, and bulk carriers. But any type of ship can be uh, using this type of technology. Our scrubber is looking pretty much like any other scrubbers nowadays. Uh, used to be different before, before with uh, some scrubbers coming from the side and some from the top. And, but now what seems to be the most efficient approach is to go straight up. Uh, and uh, ours is all metallic, it dries run, uh, so you can shut off the water without having a bypass. It's, it's more quiet than the original silencers. So the ships we have, we tested, and it's, it's very quiet compared to the original design of the silencer. So we replaced the silencer, and that's where we fit the scrubbers. And we are the same size as the silencer. Uh, so fitting within the existing funnel is fairly easy. Nothing is easy, of course, depends where the silencer is. <laughs> but I'll show you some things of that. So when we talk about uh, open loop, closed loop, it's very typical. You've seen this before by uh, me at some of the presentations and others, similar designs. We have all three. Um, and just want to show you some pictures. That's what a scrubber looks like, taking the mid arrow scrubbers, for those of you who haven't seen it yet. This scrubber replaced the silencer on a bulk carrier. We have two side by side on the ship. Uh, yeah, the silencer came out, the scrubber went in. You see here the, where the old silencer support were burned off. So it, no change to the funnel. Um, but the piping had to put in, of course. So putting a scrubber in is only a portion of the work. The, si the piping goes in, the electrical goes in, the pumps, new pumps for the scrubber. Uh, these are the control panels. So I mentioned two scrubbers side by side. You see two panels side by side. But that's all the size they are. The, in the old days, the panels used to take as much as a room. Uh, now it's just a few panels on a wall. 
everything is controlled, including variable frequency drives. We put those right in there as well. And uh, um, the, the, what you can see on the panel here, you can have that picture, or better yet, just a red and a green. So your people, all they have to know is how to start and how to stop by pressing red or green. And uh, if they want to get into additional detail, then press all the buttons. They can get down to PNID view and, and all that. Now, the other thing that uh, you require to do as a ship owner in an ECA, you have to meet uh, 0 0.1 equivalent. That means it's a 4.3 uh, SO2 to CO2 ratio. Don't ask me why they decided to go with the ratio. Would have been so much easier to just put PPM at the stack, but they decided on a ratio, that's what you have. In 2020, you will meet 21.7 ratio. And this is what we do with our scrubbers, zero. So when you look at the sulfur emissions at the stack, and this was with 3.5% sulfur fuel, this is on a Roro in, in the Baltic, um, the emissions of SO2 are zero, that's where we ended up. Just to quickly through some pictures, this is a scrubber being put in on one of the funnels, another one being put in through the funnel itself where the silencer came out. This is on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. We are doing seven ships for them. These are a little more complex. They don't easily come in through the top because of all the cabins. Uh, so some of these have to be cut in pieces and put in from the side and go up and weld it in place. So it's a little more complex. That's what some of the scrubbers look like in the shop. Uh, wash water treatment plant, all completed. We supply different options, a centrifuge-based design or a membrane-based. And that's what the sludge looks like. This is the, what you now are breathing when you go near a ship. This all goes in the air presently. When we put a scrubber, it all comes out of the air, goes into that uh, container. And thank you very much. I just finished the presentation. Thank you.